In the history of Formula 1, there have been multiple great pole laps. A few that comes to mind, Senna in 88 at Monaco, Jerez 97 when Schumacher, Villeneuve and Fredson set the same lap time. Schumacher taking pole at Monaco in that Mercedes that wasn't really that good yet. I mean, okay, it had a few podiums and a win that year, so it maybe it wasn't that bad. Sebastian Vettel 2013 at Singapore, Lewis Hamilton 2020 at Belgium, or my personal favorite, Juan Pablo Montoya 2004 at the Italian Grand Prix, which is actually no longer the fastest lap in F1 history. It was at the time, but now it's been beaten by both Raikkonen and Lewis Hamilton. More recently, I think you can actually mention Suzuka last year, Max Verstappen, I think it was like four tenths ahead of Oscar Piastri or was it Lando Norris? That was a, also a scorching lap time. But you clicked on this video, you know what race is coming up this week. We're going to be talking about Lewis Hamilton's 2018 Singapore poll and how much it meant. Now we haven't had the Singapore Grand Prix in a proper title fight since 2018. I don't care that it ended early, it was still close for majority of the season. And Singapore has always been the turning point of the title. Take 2008 for example, Felipe Massa's pit lane incident which was indirectly caused by crash gate and he was already out of the points but he still spun at turn 18 and that followed by adrian suto later on which was actually pretty hilarious to watch 2010 lewis hamilton dnfing the race with a collision with uh, mark webber which could have been easily avoided and had he finished p3 he would have only finished i think one point behind sebastian fettel but then there's also spain earlier in the year so yeah 2012 having a gearbox issue and retiring while leading the race i know it wasn't just singapore there was a lot of other instances like in spa abu dhabi is one of them even you can even consider brazil if i think hulkenberg was at fault for that but i digress 2014 rosberg didn't even get off the line for the formation lap he had to go back to the pits and he was able to go back out again but he was already a lap down so there was no point and they retired his car he was having a hard time passing a few KRMs here and there. If 2015 was a title fight, it can actually be considered in this list because Lewis Hamilton, well, he DNF, and it was actually a pretty horrendous weekend for Mercedes overall, so this really doesn't count. 2016, that was probably Lewis Hamilton's wake up call. I mean, if Ferrari had a better strategy, he would have finished P4. 2017, actually, this never happened. Um, if you've seen Spider Man No Way Home, you know that Mysterio fake stuff with drones. Yeah, he faked this one with Jones. This actually never happened. I don't even know what I'm looking at. This isn't this is AI generated. Like um LeBron getting dunked on in the Olympics. That was AI generated, mate. And 2018, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. Now Singapore never really suited the Mercedes, with the odd exception being 2014 and 2016, because come on, their cars in those years were just league above leagues above the rest of the grid. But in 2015 and 2017, Singapore suited the Red Bull and the Ferrari more. It's just that in 2017, we all know what happened in lap one. If lap one never happened, I think Lewis is only finishing P3 at best. So heading into the 2018 Singapore Grand Prix, it's the same story. Ferrari and Red Bull look like the cars who are going to be up on top. And there's even a few samples of this earlier in the season, like in Monaco, and you can probably count Canada as well. But first, what happened the weekend before? Well, first they made a bit of a dumb decision. They let Fettel go before Raikkonen, even though they know you're going to get a toe if you're behind someone in Monza, which led Raikkonen to get pull over Sebastian Fettel. But knowing that Sebastian Fettel and Lewis Hamilton were in a title fight situation, they would totally switch their drivers going to turn one right? The complete opposite happened, in fact the worst outcome of this happened, because although Sebastian Vettel had a much better start than Kimi Raikkonen going to turn 1, Raikkonen defended that position, leaving a really open gap for Lewis Hamilton to overtake Sebastian Vettel from. Vettel defended that going to turn 2, but Hamilton had a much better exit, and going to the curve of Grande, Hamilton had a lot of slipstream on Sebastian Vettel, and at the Seconda Variante, Vettel and Hamilton collided. Now spinning wouldn't be that bad, but what made it even worse was that Sebastian Vettel actually had end plate damage, so he had to come into to the pits to change his wing, putting him dead last. At lap 4, Lewis briefly got the lead, but Raikkonen was able to overtake him back at turn 4. And since it was a 2 versus 1 instead of a 2 versus 2 for Mercedes, Mercedes were able to let Bottas run longer, Raikkonen was stuck behind Bottas and was costing blisters on his rear tires. And this ultimately won the race for Mercedes, a strategical masterclass. And all of this happened because Ferrari decided to prioritize the number 2 driver instead of the number 1 driver. But to be very fair to Raikkonen, he was controlling the entire race race before the pit window and the Sebastian Vettel collision with Lewis Hamilton at turn 4 was his fault. It wasn't Hamilton's fault, it wasn't a racing incident, it was his fault. He was too eager to get Lewis Hamilton. Now heading to the Singapore Grand Prix, an 11 year old me was told that I will be seeing F1 cars for the first time since 2013. Oh wait, this isn't about me, this is about Lewis Hamilton. I actually just realized I saw Hamilton in his first season with Mercedes and I'm going to be seeing him this weekend in his last season with Mercedes, which is actually really cool, so yeah. 
Heading to the Singapore Grand Prix, Charles Leclerc was announced to drive for Ferrari in 2019, with Raikkonen returning to Sauber, which sets up a very interesting precedent moving forward for Ferrari. Considering that Ferrari were faster than Mercedes the whole weekend until Mercedes got the upper hand of them on the strategy, there was hope for the Singapore Grand Prix, but something will be standing in between them, which is Red Bull, which showed in free practice 1 when Red Bull locked out the 1-2 positions with Vettel and Raikkonen P3 and P4, and by a considerable margin as well. Where are the Mercedes drivers in all of this, I hear you ask? P6 and P8. Not the best start to the weekend so far. For Mercedes, that is. It was the best start Red Bull can ask for, and it was an okay start for Ferrari because they would ideally like to be on top. Free practice 2 was a lot better for Lewis Hamilton, as he finished P2 right behind Kimi Raikkonen by only a very tiny margin, which was a uh, one hundredth of a second. Sebastian Vettel's time was actually slower than his P1 time, but he only did 12 laps, so that's understandable. It was looking positive for Mercedes going to free practice 3, until it didn't, because Lewis Hamilton ended up being 5 tenths lower than Sebastian Vettel. He did 14 runs, Seb did 19, uh, same thing. A bit better for Bottas, finishing P4, but again, it's pretty much the same gap as he had in free practice too. And two of the Red Bulls, I don't even think they were trying, mate. And this is the practice session where you do your quali runs, so... So it wasn't looking too good for Mercedes going into qualifying. And after all that build up to the weekend... Now I can only base off this qualifying review on the highlights because because F1 TV Pro doesn't exist in Singapore so I can't look at the race replays. Get on that stuff, F1. In Q1, Lewis Hamilton was almost knocked out, being 1.2 seconds behind Daniel Ricciardo and finishing P14. You could say that was just a bad lap from him, but his teammate Valtteri Bottas only a tenth quicker than him and finished P11, behind Charles Leclerc for crying out loud. Guys again, Magnussen's lap were nowhere near to, to Hamilton's, they were whopping two tenths lower than him, so Lewis was safe for the time being. I think you also have to take into account that the previous year, Sebastian Vettel also had a poor Q1. Q2 came along, but nothing really interesting happened in Q2. The top 10 was who you'd expect going into Q3, with the exception of Roman Grosjean actually being in the top 10, like, come on. And Mercedes were now closer to the top than ever, with Valtteri Bottas only being 6 hundredths of a second slower than Kimi Raikkonen, and then hitting a 37 too, but it's only good enough for third fastest. Lewis Hamilton went fourth fastest, but he was a whole 9 hundredths on his teammate, and 1.5 tenths away from the lead. Ferrari are looking strong for pole, setting the fastest time of the weekend so far, but not so good news for Sebastian Vettel as he's a whopping 5 tenths of a second away from his title rival Lewis Hamilton. Esteban Ocon sets a 139.1, I, I mean come on, and next across the line Kimi Raikkonen only sets a 137.4 a whole 3 tenths of a second slower than his Q2 time, which can actually be due to him using used Hypersoft. Hülkenberg and Perez were next across the line, but they barely challenged Raikkonen, I mean come on. And what would unfold next damage the hearts of every single Ferrari fan in the world, including me who is present at this moment. Q Hamilton 36015. Provisional pole goes to Kimi Raikkonen, but we turn our attention now to the last few corners and Lewis Hamilton riding underneath the grandstand as we go. Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton four tenths down. Vettel on Hamilton through the middle sector. Onwards now to the final corner. Sergio Perez behind his teammate Esteban Ocon for Force India. Hamilton crosses the line on 136-0. Wow, was that fast? Lewis just comes up with this out of nowhere setting all three purple sectors. Valtteri Bottas crosses the line next, no good. Sebastian Vettel, six tenths away. Six bloody tenths. Daniel Ricciardo, yeah, no chance, mate. And then Max Verstappen next, three tenths of a second. Pretty impressive effort, but you have to consider that the Red Bull was faster than the Mercedes at this track. So really, even if he didn't get pole, he should be at least a tenth within Lewis Hamilton's time. Oh, and uh, Grosjean goes P7. On Kimi Raikkonen's second run, he was a whole 7 tenths off the pace. Nowhere close to that. Probably lost a chunk of time on the last sector. Vettel and Verstappen said purple first and middle sectors, but it's just not enough. Hamilton's final sector, if you look at the timing sheets, just way too strong. Not even Lewis Hamilton can beat Lewis Hamilton's pole time. I think the top three drivers, maybe apart from Hamilton, was pushing too much on their final attempts because none of them improved on their time. Everyone else improved, I think, apart from Hulkenberg. Yeah, Grosjean didn't even go for a final run. But Verstappen and Vettel had the chance to beat the pole time. They were just pushing way too much. For Hamilton, he just connected to the track. 
like a hot knife through butter. And what Crofty said after the session, that could be a championship winning lap. Yes, it was. After this point, it was pretty much decided that Hamilton has won the championship and also had the best season of his career. And also, Lewis Hamilton, the press conference after qualifying, said it was the most complete lap of his career. It's difficult to ever say if it's your best one or not, but that one felt the most complete lap that I think I may have ever done. Well, so there you go. Top 3 qualifying lap time of all time. If I have to say a top 3, it's Senna 88 in Monaco, Michael Schumacher at Monaco as well, and Lewis Hamilton at Singapore, and they're all street circuits. It seems like street circuit pole times just get more recognition to purpose-built track pole times, and it makes sense because you're closer to the walls, it's also mentally tougher. And Singapore at the time was the hardest track to these drivers, but I think now it's Qatar. But in Singapore, it's a combination of both the track and the weather, in Qatar, it's mostly the weather. The track is quite simple really and after this insane night well it really wasn't that interesting of a qualifying session it's just the pole lap that makes up for this i mean really the top six remained the same throughout the entire session and then the race rolled along it was a pretty mid race not that boring there are some moments here or there like uh, Perez and Ocon and Sergei Sorotkin as well. I mean, Perez was on a generational Yuji Ide run this night. Oh yeah, this happened before this, but it was the greatest Ferrari blunder of all time. Ferrari tried to undercut Lewis Hamilton, but then Vettel was stuck behind Sergio Perez. Well, it's not really Ferrari's fault. They didn't know that they would end up behind Perez. And he also lost his position to Verstappen, but Ferrari put him on the ultra soft. There, there you go. That's Ferrari's fault. Ferrari put Vettel on the ultra soft, which obviously won't last until the end of the race. So he just had to box again no he didn't box again right he just held on to the end and eh, whatever and also max and lewis being stuck in traffic which is actually a pretty entertaining sequence but other than that no nothing much happened crofty said his poetic commentary about lewis hamilton's win it's gonna be a fourth singapore grand prix victory for lewis hamilton he said that this place was hotter than hell well i think his lap last night in qualifying and his 61 laps tonight have been heaven sent for lewis hamilton Sebastian Vettel comes home to finish third in Singapore for the first time and it's going to be no consolation when he stands on that podium and yeah he won the race and mentally secured the title for Mercedes after this there was no going back they secured the championship and probably a top five weekend of his career weekend as a whole not just the race oh the weekend as a whole well that's it for today's video i was actually planning to do a mystery science theater f1 type video for this but then i didn't have enough footage of qualifying because the full thing is seems to not exist anymore even the torrents don't work anymore let me know if there's anything you would like for me to recap i think one in the top of my mind probably britain 2015 or hungary 2013 because that was the last non-red bull win of 2013 thanks for watching like and subscribe and goodbye.